Welcome to this video where I introduce you to the basic techniques you will need to begin to practice when attempting to render wood. So as you can see here, I've already started drawing out some shapes. I actually have this underlay. So one of the first things you'll notice about rendering anything is it's best to sketch out the geometry, the shape of your object first on a different piece of paper and then use another piece to try and render it. One of the reasons for this is that if you get it wrong, you could just do it again and try over and over again. And as I said, this is about practice. You're not going to produce a photorealistic piece of artwork. That's not the point of rendering our design ideas. What we're looking for here is to just communicate the tonal differences on the surfaces, the materials that we were going to use to manufacture the part, and also just the three dimensional nature of the object. So usually we consider the light to be coming over our left shoulder, so sort of down this area here. So as you can see, this looks a bit like wood already because what I've done is I've understood where the wood grain would be running. On a piece of dowel like this, the grain would run along the length and then the end grain, which you would, can imagine would be the heartwood. So if you, as we know, trees grow with rings on the inside. When we convert the tree, when we cut it down and turn it into wood and timber, what we do is we tend to cut it in big logs and then turn this into strips. So what we would have here is we'd have end grain here and actual grain running down there. Now obviously where we get the branches of the tree coming out, we would get these knots. So that's an easy way to identify things of wood is we're looking for those sort of oval circular patterns where it gets darker, the smaller the circle gets. So here, as you can see, what we've done is we've got our cylinder shape, like a dowel or something similar. And we've just put this end grain, which are these curved lines on the end face. And then we've brought them down the length and curving them as they get smaller. And that way it gives us this sense of it being wood. So here, what we would first do is to identify the end grain, draw on the heartwood, then draw the grain as it runs down the length. If you want to get a little bit creative, you can put a little knot in here and have the grain go around it and then just put a few more lines going around. And that will help people understand that it's from a wooden material. Now, if you were gonna paint this, so if you were doing a product, say a children's toy made out of beach that was gonna be painted, but you could still see the wood effect, then all you would do is just render it, same technique, but in the color you want the paint to be. So if it was green, do the whole thing in green, but put that wooden pattern on there. So that's the first thing, the most important thing about doing a wooden rendering is getting the grain pattern correct. If you end up putting this line on there and then horizontal lines across here, it's not gonna look right. People are instantly gonna look at it and think there's something wrong with that. Now that we've got to this point, we need to talk about how we render the entire object in terms of tonal choices. Most people think wood is brown. Obviously, it's a different version of brown depending on which type of wood you're using. Some woods are very red, some woods are very sort of yellowy and pale. So first thing to do is to research what type of wood you're gonna use. I'm gonna do this as some sort of pine or balsa wood just because those are the pencils I have to hand, but if you're doing something that was mahogany or cherry or anything like that, research what colors they are, get those particular color pencils and work with the same technique. So if we know that the light is gonna be hitting here, this is gonna be our lightest part. So the first thing we're gonna do is put our lightest tone over the entire object. So you'll notice that I'm holding the pencil further back. If I'm writing or doing detailed work, I'm holding it down this end. If I'm trying to do uh, shading, as we would call it, I suppose, or tonal work, I'm holding it further back so that I've got a lighter touch and using this flat edge to just put lines that are parallel to the grain in the lightest tone I want over my entire object. And obviously, if I want to, I can follow this around in the heart shape, but what I tend to do is choose the longest edge and just follow that. So now I've got the lightest tone over the whole thing. I can actually go in and make it darker. I know that this entire face is gonna be darker. So before I start doing that, I'm just gonna go in and darken out the grain. This could be a good point to bring in an even darker shade, just a very light line, just along the grain. Now you'll notice that I've sharpened all my pencils before I started. It's important that you do that before you 
start because if you start sharpening your pencils halfway through you can end up smudging some of the shavings onto your work sometimes obviously you will need to sharpen them eventually if you're doing a large drawing so now you can see I'm just doing this entire face slightly darker because I know the light the lightest area is going to be here so this can just be darker this area down here it's going to be the same sort of tone as up here so this area in the bottom can be the darkest and then this area down here we're going to try and match that going lighter upwards now you see what I mean I've lost some of my wood grain there so then I can take this pencil just start putting those back in for now now what can happen sometimes is as you make these areas darker what you thought was quite dark in terms of its tonal range becomes almost white if that's the case go back in and make it a little bit darker if you need to and then this area down here is going to be slightly darker again and this is going to be light but it's going to be slightly darker if you imagine it's almost like a spotlight or a diffused spotlight there and again I've lost some of my wood grain so I'm going to come back in and add that back in now what I wouldn't do here is press down really hard and do the whole length of the grain in that colour what you want to do is to try and get these sort of flecks because real wood has lots of tonal lots of changes in the hue and tonal changes so it's got these sort of flex where the grain goes along so we want to replicate these things as much as possible but also highlight the points on the wood where it the angle of the grain changes if that makes sense so you see these points here if you highlight those it starts to make it look more like a piece of wood. And obviously we can apply the thick thin line technique and if you want to take the lightest tone on your piece of material and imagine it's sat on a white surface that means the hue the color on here would be reflected onto here in the shadow it wouldn't just be black part of that shadow would be the object itself now if you want to get really technical you can start to use more contrasting colors so because this has got a bit of red and orange in it if I use a bit of blue over the top it can sort of desaturate and take down that color to cool it off create more of a shadow look so you can see how it's changed the tone of that brown and this side is a little bit cooler like it's in shadow but that's just something you can play around with so if I wanted to I could also take in some yellow because we know that the resin in the wood when it gets quite compacted can become quite bright or dark depending on the type of wood we're looking at so for this particular type of wood I've decided that I've got some yellow tones in there and you can always go in with some orange if you want as well if that works but again it's just very light flex of color and that should do we'll go back in with our original brown and just neaten it all up This would be a good point to probably sharpen this pencil. Maybe darken this right down and take that darker brown in. Another line here, line there. And if you want to, put a, if, you, if you're going to have a natural piece of timber that's been a bit roughed up, as you're coming along, just put a few nicks in the edge so you see this little nick here that comes in and as you go along here don't make it a perfectly straight edge just a little little wobble in here 
little nick in there and this corner here really highlight what's going on there obviously if it's a perfectly planed piece of wood then we probably wouldn't do that there we go a rendered piece of timber obviously this is much easier than doing rendering on an entire object if you want to see what that sort of thing would look like I've got a drawing I've done before so it's this sort of thing here where you've got multiple grains going off in different directions but by using the thick thin line technique and the grains you can see that these parts are wood and that it's actually communicating the tonal changes and where the shadows are and where the different pieces of materials are interacting and what they're made of so in summary just remember you want to identify the direction of the grain first apply the lightest tone across the whole object and then start using your different colors to work in the different pieces of grain and the different patterns you want to represent and don't forget to add a few knots in every now and again just to show it is wood.